Luke chapter 24 as you rise on your feet. Luke 24 verse 13. Praise the Lord. That's boring. Praise the Lord. Amen. Better. And then two of them on that very day were going to a little town named Emmaus, which was about how many miles from Jerusalem? Say it better. How many miles from Jerusalem? And they were talking together about all those things which had taken place. Verse number 15. And while they were talking and questioning together, Jesus himself, tell your neighbor, Jesus himself, he came near and he went with them. Verse 16. But their eyes were not open that they might have the knowledge of him. What a pity. But their eyes were not open that they might have the knowledge. The Bible does not say that they might see him. The Bible says that they might have the knowledge. There is a difference. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we read verse number 16 together? All right, all right. One, two, three. Attack. But their eyes were not open that they... Verse number 17. And he said unto them... What are you talking about together while you go? Verses number 18. Then stopping and looking at him sadly, one of them named Cleopas said unto him, Are you the only man in Jerusalem who has not heard the news of the things which took place there at this time? And verse number 19 as we close. And he said unto them, What things? And they said, The things to do with Jesus of Nazareth. Who was a what? A prophet. Praise the Lord. Who was a what? A prophet. Great in his acts and in his words. Before God and all of the people. Father, help us as we divide your word. Amen. Have your seats. First of all, before I even go ahead, it's important that I, I feel I should mention this. I know most of us, we have been brought up in backgrounds where we did not understand and we have no understanding of the prophetic. Praise the Lord. I feel I should just mention a little bit about the prophetic in two minutes. It is very important to note that every human being ought to understand the prophetic. Praise the Lord. God, the Bible says, he shall not do anything without revealing it to his prophets. You can Google that verse. I don't know which one it is. I don't remember. That he shall not do anything before revealing it to his prophets. So for God to do anything, it must have been dropped in the spirit of a prophet somewhere. Praise the Lord. So the work of prophets is to proclaim to you what God is about to do. Praise the Lord. And that is why every human being ought to be prophetic even if they are not called to be prophets. There is a difference. You can be prophetic, but you are not called into the prophet's office. This is what I mean. If you are prophetic and Elijah says that tomorrow at this time there shall be food in Israel until nobody shall be hungry. If you are prophetic, you will believe it. Because you know and you can see into the future that it is possible. But if you are not prophetic, you will be like somebody who was there, an official in the government, who had the same prophecy from Elijah, but he said it is not possible. Why? He was not prophetic. He did not understand the way the things of the spirit and the prophetic work. So it is important that you understand how things work. Tell your neighbor, understand. That's so boring. Say it again. Better. Amen. So it is important that we understand how God works in the spirit. Such that even if it is now and God tells you in the next one minute, I am providing for you this. You are able to believe that word, not because you were told, but because it is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so it is important that we understand the things of the prophetic. Praise the Lord. The main reason why you come to church every day. The main reason why you pray. The main reason why the Bible was written was not for your entertainment. The Bible was not written because people lacked jobs to do. And so they decided to waste time writing Bibles. Mm -mm. The Bible and God speaks because there is a reason that he is speaking for. 
this is this is something you should know in your heart when god says that you are the light and the salt of the earth it means there is a problem somewhere that when you introduce to such an environment you can give a solution that is why the bible was written for you hallelujah and so when you come to church the reason why you come is so that you can hear the word of god and it's not all about hearing it's hearing and it brings forth faith inside of you and that faith is what begins transforming your life praise the lord the reason why you come here every day the reason why we sit down to prepare sermons is not to make you be informed you know so that you can stand before people and you're so much informed amen you know everything no no no, no. that's not why the bible is preached that is not why god sends his word God sends his word for a purpose and the purpose is for your own transformation. Hallelujah. So how, how much is this thing transforming you? When you come in today, are you going back the same way you came? Are you, are you going back home with the same issues you have? Because you know what? We can come here and testify about everything, about the doing of the Lord. But if that thing has not been personalized into your life, you will remain to hear it as a testimony from people. Transformation. Tell your neighbor, transformation. Very much boring. Say transformation. Amen. And so today I'm going to speak to you on something called the first of a kind. I know maybe it does not make sense to you, but it will soon. Tell your neighbor the first of a kind. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor the first of a kind. Tell them, I'm also new here. I'm a visitor. Praise the Lord. I'm a visitor. Jesus is walking. Two disciples after Jesus has died, they have left Jerusalem. Jesus told them, don't leave Jerusalem. But two of them did not hear. So they have left Jerusalem and they are going to another town. And while they are walking, Jesus catches up with them. The Bible says he joined them. But you know what? They didn't recognize him. This is what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 24. That their eyes were shut that they might not have the knowledge of him. Listen, I might be able to see you, but I don't have the knowledge of who you are. You didn't hear me. I might see Serulo walking around in town. But if I don't have discernment in my heart, I might not know what he carries inside of him. I, am I talking to somebody here today? So people are walking towards a certain town and Jesus walks into them. Praise the Lord. And so they're walking together. And the Bible says, while they are walking together, Jesus is there, but they don't have the knowledge of him. It is so sad because for 30 years, these guys have been with Jesus. Oh my God, it doesn't matter how many times and how many years you've come to church. If this thing has not been revealed in your heart, you will not have the knowledge of him. Because you know what? Sometimes we have issues in our lives and something is pressing you down. And you know and you know that this thing is pressing you down so much. But if he walks in and you don't have the knowledge of him, then you will remain the same. So you need to have the ability to know him. Oh my God, praise the Lord. Are we together? How many desire to have the knowledge of him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nikufahamu bwana nafsi yangu yatamani If that is the desire of your heart lift up your voice and tell him Lord I desire to know you I desire to know you This is not a matter of being innocent and humble in the presence of the Lord you want to talk with lipstick in your mouth like you don't want to. If you are yearning for this thing, then say it like you mean it. Like, Lord, I need to know you. I need to know you. They walked with Jesus. Jesus was there. But they did not see him. They saw him with their physical eyes. But they would not see him in the spirit. Not a man. Ah. Oh, my God. 
17 the Bible says and he said unto them what are you talking about together while you walk because in our lives we have conversations that are going on every day as you go to work you have conversations going on some of you the Lord has blessed you you have your own cars you even have radios in those cars but you still listen to it in the morning but in your car you're still listening to it but there are people who don't have the privileges of owning their own car. When they sit in a matati, they don't have any other option. And those are the things you listen to every day. There are conversations always going on, even in the church. Conversations are going on. Jesus walks into the picture and he says, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Lord, I am sick. This disease that my father has always had, what are you talking about? Lord, I don't have money. I mean, my rent is not sorted. Where well, I don't have a job. And he walks into the picture. And because you do not know him, because you don't have the knowledge of him, your conversation is out of context. And when he moves in, the first question is, what are you talking about? PMI thicker on. What are you talking about? You know, when you're talking, you're also listening. Because when we talk with Morris, I cannot talk to Morris when he's asleep. He sleeps deeply so much, you cannot even call him and he hears you. So when you talk to somebody, he must be able to return. When you call him, Morris, he must tell you, yes, that is what is called talking. So when Jesus says, what are you talking about? He means both of you are talking. It is not one person. These people are both talking and they don't have content. Both of them don't know Jesus. Recently I posted something on my, on my status and it brought me a lot of problems with people who are religious. I said, if you know nothing and you teach your children what you know, what are you teaching them? Thank you. So if you're religious and you teach your children what you know, what are you teaching them? This is why you need to avoid religion. What are you talking about? Praise the Lord. So Jesus is asking, I'm trying to listen to you people, but what are you talking about? about listen to what they told jesus verse number verse number one verse number something oh 18 then stopping and looking at him sadly ali murumi ali rumi ayesu guy guy hey and cleopas asked him are you the only man who is a visitor in Jerusalem? Tell your neighbor I'm the first of a kind. Tell them I'm also new here. Cleopas thought that Jesus was new in Jerusalem. And listen to how Cleopas preached about Jesus. Oh my God, if I was Jesus and you preach about me this way, the way Cleopas preached here, I would have slapped him thoroughly. Verse number 19, and he said, what things and they said unto him the things to do with jesus do you know what according to cleopas the gospel is still things to do with jesus you didn't understand what i said according to cleopas this thing is still information it is still things to do with jesus it is not to do with us mm. it is about who in other words and then he said listen to how he describes jesus he says, who was a prophet? Was. Okay, wait. I'm a Chakwa prophet. Do you know what it means to say that this guy was a prophet? This is what Cleopas is saying. This guy is no longer functioning. Jesus expired. That is what Cleopas is saying. 
He has retired Jesus automatically. Na nampatia malipo ya wazee. He was a prophet. He was great in his heart. Wacha mtu mko tunatembea na yeye, wasewa blind wanaona. Great. Kuna place tulienda naye tulikula koinoni ya mikate na samak. Tulikula. That guy was great in his heart. Then he says before God and before people. Thank you worship team. Before God and before people. He's not even saying before us. Mm -mm. People. Before God and before people. He was their prophet. He was. Do you know something? There was no difference between Cleopas and a person who had never walked with Jesus. They were the same. And then the Bible says that as they kept walking, Jesus walked with them and he taught them the word. And they say that, did you realize that when he talked about to us, there was a fire burning in the inside of us. Tell your neighbor, I'm the first of a kind. The main reason why these people thought that Jesus was in the past is because they had never seen anything like that happen in the face of the earth. They had never seen a man who was great in his acts, a guy who was great before all the people. They had never seen. So therefore, they decided to compare it with the simplest thing they can see. They said he was a prophet. They had never heard about him. Jesus was the first of a kind. I don't know if you're beginning to get what I want to talk about. You have not started talking yet. I'm yet to begin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So these people, to them, Jesus was just a certain theory they were hearing. The way some of us are, the gospel is still a theory to us. We, we still know. You know, you have not grown to a point of, of beginning to, to believe that you can move and pray until things begin happening. You have not believed and come to a point of saying that I know things are not working out, but I know a God who can make things work out. This God is still a God of some people. You come to church every day. You come and sit down, you give your offering, and you believe that things just will work out like that. That is not how the kingdom operates. In the kingdom, you have to move and do, and you move closer to him. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door, and I knock. So what you do is, you open, then I will come in and dine with you. If you don't open, he stays at the door. Praise the Lord. I remember when we were just born again, there's this guy who was mentoring us in salvation and he would, he would teach us a certain song that would say, Draw near to him, he's in with us. Show him your love, he's in love with us. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we lift our hands, he will hear us. Such, such kind of songs. Praise the Lord. And so today as I'm going to speak to you, I am going to, I have, I have classified this thing in, a three study form i'm going to teach you the bible in three forms and then after that i the, the holy spirit will do what he wants to do with you i'll have been done and i'll go away and i will sleep at night praise the lord so my aim and the reason why i feel god put this and in my heart to speak about it today is we need to come to the knowledge of our identity in god the main reason why those people failed to know Jesus is because they didn't even know that now they were belonging to another kingdom. They did not know their identity. So, so they were just walking around, but they didn't know their identity. Another thing we need to do is we need to be introduced to the Father every day. You need to be introduced to God every day. Listen, only God is the same yesterday, today, and to forever. But your knowledge of God should change yesterday, today, and forever. I will say that again. God is the only one who remains constant. You, your knowledge of God should change every day. Do you know something? The Bible says that uh, th there's this revelation I had somewhere. And it's, it's really blessing my heart. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. This is what it means to form. When I want to form something, it takes me time to form it. So if, if this is my suit, this is a designer suit from Kariobangi. So this is my designer suit. I went to Kariobangi and the person had to do what? No, not form. Give me the word. Mesa me. The person had to mesa 
my, my chest, mess up my waist, mess up my, my uh, they, they here to mess up my, this is called what? Huh? Uh, yo, he had to measure everything and then he wrote it down. Let me tell you, if I would have accumulated weight in that week, that guy would not have given me the right suit. I would have gone and tried to put on the suit, but fast. So even now, if I try to close it, there's a strain. Praise the Lord. Listen to my, listen to this. The enemy he forms weapons for you. So he comes and akupima. Does he know that God is a healer? Hajui. Does he know that God can provide? Hajui. Malaria. Attack. So malaria falls on you. Malaria has been formed. Na kwa sababu lisha pimwa inaingia kwako vizuri. I don't know if you're getting me yet. So the suit of malaria has been formed for you. Ukivalishwa. Ai. Uko smart kwa malaria mbaya. You're walking around but you're smart in malaria. Until you call it my malaria. Niangu. Hii asma yetu. Hii asma yetu. Shoshua likuwa na yo mama kakua na yo nini kakua na yo ni yetu. Sisi kwetu mapepo inasumbuanga watu. Aki ungeona shosho yangu siku. Na pia mime naona yo kitu inaanza kunikujia. You know the difference between Jesus and the doctors is this. Doctors listen to your issues. Doctors give you a listening ear. Atu kimuambia hata lewa sibuini leamka. Nika sikia sisiki kukula. Ana kusikiza tu. Na anajua tu ni hape taituna. Unamuambia nileamka nika sikia hivi. Ni hivo tu. The doctors give you time. Jesus. Mm -mm. Jesus, you come to him and you tell him, Master, I want to see. You don't tell him what you're going through. Every time he would appear and he would ask people, what should I do for you? No, not, not what are you going through. There's a difference. Not what you, you, know, you know, when you come to be helped, guidance and counseling will listen to everything. But when you come to Jesus, just say, I want to get born again. Period. Praise the Lord. Forget your stories. Take them to doctors. When you come to Jesus, tell him, this is my issue. Praise the Lord. Because you need to know the Father. Praise the Lord. The last thing I'm going to do today is to make you aware of a kingdom principle and the way the kingdom operates. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's very boring. Praise the Lord. I'm not hearing you. Praise the Lord. Everything we talk about it cannot be realistic and come to pass in your life if you're not operating as a son of God. The only person who benefits from the things of the kingdom are the sons of God. John chapter number 1 verse 12. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 that the word, you know the story, and then the Bible says that it was made flesh and he dwelt with men. Then verse 12 it says that for as many as believed in him, to them he gave the power to be called what? Sons of God. Praise the Lord. So when you meet him, he makes you a son. The difference between people who come to church and people who know God is their identity. If you know that you are a son of God, Munich to Praise the Lord. I mean, just imagine if you would be walking around with the son of a minister. Okay, let me give you a practical example. In the morning, you are jam. Mutaiga ipitiki. And then somebody just comes with a siren on their cars. What is the difference? Why don't you one day buy a siren, put it on your V8, and try doing that on Thicker Road and see. Kama sisi watu wa mgutu tatoka. I mean, just try. Try. Praise the Lord. But when we see policemen escorting you, and then there is a siren, we just know. Hiyo gari, aida beba mtu wa kawaida, songa kwanjia. Na kabendera, kabendera, siju kwa nini bendera zote zina niningi hivi. I'm waiting for the days when bendera will just begin nining like this. Praise the Lord. Kabendera kana come to ziko tu hivi. And you just pave way. Why? That person is somebody important. But you know what? Sons of God. Thank you. He is a representative of the kingdom. And so most of us, we get born again and we are sons of God, but we don't know. We don't know. Mungu wangu. 
Okay, what's going on? But the people who have come to the knowledge of their identity of God, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Do you get the difference in the song? Do you get the difference in the song? Identity. Tell your neighbor identity. So what the devil does, what the devil does, the devil closes your mind so that you don't know your identity in God. And so you're born again, you come to church, you are a member of praise and worship, ushering and intercessory, but diseases still keep playing with you like football. typhoid. Typhoid in a chest and I in a quaker quaker chest, tiki choker, poop, TB, TB, and in a deal, and a way, ki choker, poop. You know, by the way, there's this one that kills people up there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so they keep passing you. If you did not hear what Serulo said, just forget it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So diseases keep playing with you every day. They keep tossing you from one place and one field to another. Why? You don't know your identity. So that is the aim of the devil. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, the day you will come to know that you're a son of God and begin functioning. Listen to me. I said the day you will come to know and begin functioning. I didn't say the day you will know. You can know and don't function. You know, somebody can be elected as a president and they decide to live in the ghetto. But they know that the president, but are they functioning? They're not. So the day you will know and you begin functioning, your life will change. So do you know something? This is a truth I am giving you today for free. The devil has no problem with you coming to church even if you come at 5 a.m. and the rest of us come at 11. The devil has no issue with you praying the whole night. Pray all you want. Because if you pray and you don't have understanding, you're shooting blank bullets. Blank. Shetani ya kwa na ukona bunduki, lakini blank bullets. Pap! Na kufi. Wakumukele yu gemi ya tukiwa wadogo. Pap, pap, pap. We ukufi, we, we, we ukufi. Gemi yako ni mbaya. That is what the devil will be doing to you. So you know what? You can come in the praise and worship and you have the best voice ever. No problem. Let her sing there. Let him be there. We don't have an issue with him. But there is something that if you begin looking for, he sends people your way. That you want to know your identity. You want to know that you are a son of God. Because the day you know you are a son of God, things change. So he will do everything to ensure that you don't know God. Including putting you in religious environments. The devil will lead you to places where he knows that there they don't preach the genuine word of God. So that you can feel you belong in a church. Praise the Lord. He will do anything so that you, he will give you money. He will do everything so that you can just feel that, you know, I have, I have some comfort in myself. But the day you become a son of God, ha, things begin shifting in your lives. That truth, he does not want you to know. Please shake your neighbor for me and tell them, wake up. No, you want, amen. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor identity. Tell your neighbor identity. And so, and so we will do everything in the kingdom of God to ensure that you come to the knowledge of your identity. There are many types of demons. I know the common demons you are aware of are the demons that shout and scream as they go. There are other dangerous demons I want to inform you about today. The one that sits on your mind and if we teach you the word of God, you can't hear. Very dangerous. I want to come and relax too. In my elders. My father, San Edrin. Those ones, deadly. Those ones are the ones that you know what, how we deal with them. The word of God is sharper. That is what deals with them. That, that is how they are dealt with. You are exposed to the word of God. Praise the Lord. If you hunger and thirst for the word of God, why don't you shout an amen? Amen. So one of the strategies of the enemy is deceiving you. The enemy is a master deceiver. He will deceive you. The devil will make you think that you're so holy and in real sense you're not. Just give him the, the image that he is a good person. Just give him the image. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
hata rufu yake sijaipitia hata mali mtu ameivuta katoka sijaisikia good people that is how the devil wants them to be so they feel we are okay they feel praise the lord a master deceiver 